Hello, welcome to GagRule.net. My name is Wally Sarkisian. Today, Harut Sassunian is back. And let's discuss a few things here and see how much, how far we can go. Harut, welcome. Thank you, Wally. Pleasure. No long time no see. Yes, we haven't talked in a long time. You must be busy doing lots of stuff. Yes. I uh, converted my newspaper to a digital format. So this way I can have daily fresh news on the site instead of once a week. Oh, that's great. All right. Um, <clears throat> like it's, I don't know if it's worth it speaking about Artsakh anymore because it's, Everybody's turning against them. I don't know what happened to this poor child that everybody now hates. Like, what is going on? Pashinyan now is going after them, so Aliyev is putting lots of their leader in jail. Now Pashinyan wants to create new jail for those Artsakh. So what's going on? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that everybody is against Artsakh. Uh, Pashinyan and his... Uh, blind followers are definitely against Artsakh, and so are our enemies, uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey. But uh, there are a lot of uh, people who are s still supporting Artsakh. They they want a fair resolution to the problem. They want Artsakh Armenians to return to their uh, historic homeland, <clears throat> which they have lived on thousands of years. And for the first time in thousands of years, they're out of their land. So we're uh, we'll keep up the fight and we'll talk about that is there any good news well when uh, not yet the only good news that we're all waiting for someday is when pashinyan is gone yeah. so we can set the country back uh, put the country back on its feet and uh, that includes Artsakh. Well, here is, I mean, I'm sure you read this. It was all over news. Some circle forcibly dis displayed from Karabakh are taking steps that create threat to Armenia's security. So what is the security Karabakh creating for Armenia? Uh, where is the security? You mean the threat? Yeah. Well, what Pashinyan is saying, I completely disagree with him, of course, but uh, what he's saying is that if Artsakh Armenians in Armenia start talking about Artsakh, something he has completely forgotten about, handed over to Azerbaijan, and crossed it out of his mind, and if people talk about it, and we'll give various examples of how in so many ways is against Artsakh in so many different fields, so he, he thinks that if Artsakh Armenians talk about uh, Artsakh and going back to Artsakh, uh, Aliyev will be mad and will uh, attack Armenia. Of course, these are the words of a coward who's scared of uh, anything. And it, it didn't start with Artsakh. It has uh, many other examples I think we spoke about in the past, from the changing the constitution, to changing the coat of arms, the national anthem, whatever Aliyev says, in two days, uh, Pashinyan says, yes, we'll do it. And uh, as if Aliyev is sitting in uh, the prime minister's seat in Yerevan, not in Baku. It's just amazing, isn't it? Two Completely days, amazing. Li that literally is, is... two days, even Pashinyan or his wife, when uh, Aliyev says, you know, uh, 11,000, what was that, uh, soldiers run away. Next day, Anna Hagopian were repeating the same thing. It's just amazing. Like, those people must have so much direct contact with each other. Yeah, well, basically, like, like a parrot, they repeat each other. Yeah. But but uh, this is a very unusual situation of, of a hostile country and... Uh, the uh, the receiving end, the victim country, being uh, the leaders being of the same mind. Usually, they're deadly enemies, their opponents, they're hostile. But in this case, they're 
uh, one says something, the other one repeats it. They fully agree. Uh, uh, Ali, of course, naturally against Artsakh, but, but surprisingly, uh, so is uh, Pashinyan. Who you think is supporting Pashinyan? Because he speaks from power, like he has no hesitation with his words, you know, like who is supporting? I must be somebody uh, behind this guy. He well, attacked, like he attacked Russian one day, next day this, next day that, and it's just, uh, it gotta, gotta be somebody like he's lay, laying his back on. Well, you know, I, I only can talk about things that I know for sure, things that I don't know, I cannot uh, talk about. I don't know who's behind him. A lot of people say that there's some foreign forces supporting him, but I have no evidence. I don't know. Uh, all I know is what he's doing is uh, contrary to Armia's interests and Artsakh interests. And I don't know if he's relying on anybody outside. Uh, others say that. Uh, I don't. But uh, I know that he's uh, inside Armenia. And nobody can challenge him because he has thousands of policemen that he pays hefty salaries and gives them bonuses every month. So when he puts, puts one step out of the building, all these hundreds of police are lined up to, to protect him. This is a man who, when he six years ago, when he came to work from home to a prime minister office, he came on a bicycle all by himself. There was not mm -hmm. a single person next to him. So now, w when he uh, travels anywhere, there's a huge entourage of police, dozens of police cars in front, in the back. They block all the side roads, streets. And uh, they don't let anybody get near him, park their cars on the streets like he was in Gumri last week. And the police had blocked all the parking spots when, from the hotel where he was meeting. So they, well, he's relying, uh, I, one thing I'm sure, he's relying on his police force protecting him from inside. And they're, they're quite brutal. They uh, arrest anybody who... Uh, comes out to demonstrate. Anybody who criticizes Pashinyan, he just had two guys arrested who have a... Yeah, do you know what happened to that? Why, what was the reason for arresting them? Uh, they supposedly they bad-mouthed Pashinyan. And, of course, he doesn't like that. Uh, uh, and this is a guy who talks about democracy day and night, but doesn't realize or doesn't care that the first basic uh, rule of democracy is freedom of expression and uh, people have the right to express their opinion whether they like him don't like him uh, you, you can't get arrested for not liking somebody if you commit a crime yeah i understand that but these people did not commit a crime they just criticized pashinian like something me and you, like me and you yeah like, like we do and uh, others do so here's the situation if you live in armenia and you're anti-pashinian you get arrested, tried, jailed, harassed, fired from your position. And if you're not living in Armenia, you live outside, then when you try to travel to Armenia, they stop you at, at the airport in Yerevan and they deport you. Yeah. So, so his, his long arm even reaches the diaspora Armenians when they try to visit their homeland. Yeah. This is very sad. Because mm. every Armenian has the right to visit their homeland. Again, mm. I'm accept, ex, accepting those who commit a crime. I understand if somebody is a criminal, then they don't let him in. What happened or, if What happened if me and you we go to Armenia? He arrested. Will U.S. government protect us? Uh, well, it depends if you're a dual citizen or not. If you're just a U.S. citizen, yes, U.S. government will. I mean, there isn't much they can do, just like Russia has several Americans in jail, there isn't much U.S. can do ex except when they agree on uh, terms of the exchange, they exchange them. But the U.S. government can pressure, persuade, uh, try to uh, tell Armenian government to release uh, their U.S. citizen. Yeah, but, uh, 
U.S. government is not that friendly to journalists anyway. If, uh, like Pashinyan, if you are not supporting the Biden or Trump, you know, you are in big trouble. Like poor uh, Julian, you know, how many years been? He's going to die in jail, you know. So, but I just ask the question, so. Oh, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, that, that, that's a diff little different case because he, he uh, publicized the uh, secret uh, documents and things, so they, they have a, a law lawsuit against him. They're trying to now to extradite him. And this week, the British High Court just delayed the extradition because there are more things to review before they take any action. But uh, the, you just can't open your mouth and say anything critical because Pashin is very thin-skinned. He gets offended very easily. Yeah. And since, since the police and the courts are uh, on his side, he pays them, uh, they will just go on uh, arrest. I mean, the, these two guys that were arrested for bad-mouthing him, they didn't just go and arrest him. They put them on the ground and beat them up. And, yeah, uh, yeah. They rubbed, rubbed they, him up. Uh, they did exactly what Pashinya says. They rubbed his face on the asphalt. Right, exactly. And this is a man who was uh, talking about democracy during the campaign in 2022 parliamentary election, he was campaigning, standing on a stage in front of the people and holding a hammer in his hand, <laughs> yeah. saying, I'm, I'm going to bash the head of anybody who uh, opposes me. Uh, and, and, uh, and this is a Democrat, supposedly, uh, losing democracy. I mean, basically, uh, that's a complete lie. Uh, he's a dictator. It's a one-man rule. He makes all the decisions in the country. It doesn't matter what for what position, he decides. Or as as a prime minister, of course, that's natural. But he also decides as uh, ministers of all kinds. He decides as parliament. He decides as the president of the country. He decides for the courts, uh, for the military. Is the chief commander. So it's it's a one man that takes all the decisions. Well, I no mean, one has. The, def the definition of dictatorship is that when you have a political party and when you do things wrong, nobody resign, nobody stand to you. That's a dictatorship. But for example, in the United States, when Trump was doing certain things, people resign, people start criticizing him. So that's uh, right now, even in Biden administration, uh, many a couple of people who resign from State Department because of this massacre of, uh, uh, so that's a democracy. But in Armenia, there is not a single person, all this crime he committed have resigned, except that uh, mayor, you know, but, but no one else. Yeah, well, the, it's even worse than that, Wally, because uh, first of all, because Pashinyan himself is incompetent, uh, very naturally, he appoints ministers, he appoints ambassadors, different countries, all other political appointees yeah. uh, that he appoints. They're all incompetent like him. An incompetent person cannot appoint a competent person. And and many of them are even, even surprisingly, are, are even more co incompetent than he is. He and, likes that. He and, likes that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, he's going to make all the decisions, so it doesn't matter who they are. And then the... To, to go a step further, if if one of all these incompetent people were around him were supposed to advise him, tell him uh, the facts and what to do, and if one of them, by chance or by mistake, says something intelligent, gives intelligent advice, Pashinyan would immediately dismiss that person, would not listen to them. He so is, not only he doesn't know anything, he doesn't listen to anybody. Here is, which, I, think, I think I have this one, I don't know if it's full, He's telling uh, his security apparatus to take action on Artsakh. I think it is. Artsakh. No, this is not. Some place he's he was speaking, so Yeah. The the, the 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 bad combination that 
Pashinyan has is is really a deadly combination of two neg- very negative things. One, he doesn't know anything. And second, he refuses to learn. This combination is deadly. Because, for example, every country in the world has president or king or a leader of, of some kind. And nobody expects the leader of a country, whether United States or England or France, Germany or whatever, no leader knows everything on every subject. That's why they have advisors, assistants, uh, chief of staff, but they have ministers, cabinet members, so that the president would invite them in, ask for advice, and then having listened to the advice, he doesn't have to do what they say, but he having listened, he makes a decision. He's the ultimate decision maker. So, so the president doesn't have to know anything. Pashinyan himself doesn't have to be a genius doesn't have to know everything. All he has to do is an open mind, appoint top-notch advisors who can advise him, experienced people, not little kids that he's surrounded with, and he listens to them. And then if he agrees or he likes their advice, he, he can then benefit from them. But this guy doesn't listen to anybody, doesn't have anybody who can give him advice. Very rare. There are some very rare exceptions. And... Uh, uh, people are uh, his advisors uh, cannot challenge him or criticize him because they know the next day they're gone they'll be fired do you know do you think there is any force in armenia there is hope they could do anything well that's the other side of the bad coin that we have we have a government that cannot manage the country a country with so many problems uh, unfortunately we're not switzerland and uh, so not only we have a bad government but in terms of the opposition opposition has several problems that's why we're not getting anywhere one is there are i think there are 118 political parties in armenia (laughs) and uh, of all sizes from a handful of people to a dozen to a hundred a few hundred and nobody wants to join anybody they all want to be their own uh, big shot, uh, their own ego trips. So uh, when they call me, all these different groups call me and uh, want to discuss situation in Armenia with me, and they ask me what to do. I said, well, s- s- simple what you have to do is you have to join and form a coalition. Uh, I-, I tell them there's good news and, and bad news. The good news is Pashinyan's rating has gone down from six years ago when it was 80%. The, the recent poll three months ago, it went down, went down to 10%. So that's the good news. The bad news is his 10% now, which is very low, is 10 times higher, many times higher yeah, than mm-hmm. all the others. One, individually, they have quarter 1%, 1%, half a percent. So I tell them, unless you come together not all of them, but many of them come together, and they become 20, 30 percent. They become three times bigger than Pashinya. Otherwise, they will never win any election, even if it's fair election. With uh, Pashinya is 10 percent, they have one percent or half a percent. They will never get anywhere like that. So that's one of the problems: is lack of unity of the opposition. The uh, other problem is that. The op- opposition, many of them are discredited because of their affiliation with the previous leaders, which many of the people hate, and uh, they associate the opposition with the previous leaders. And Pashinyan being clever, he's not smart, but he's, he's cunning, he's clever. He, he knows that, that if he plays on the game of uh, blaming the former leaders, he knows that the people will stay away from them. That's why he frequently tells them, if you get rid of me or if I resign, the former leaders are, are going to come back. So if I go, either Serge Sarkisian or Robert Kocharian will come back. So even even his supporters, they when they call me, contact me, they say, uh, well, uh, you are criticizing Pashinyan, but if he goes, then the Kocharian or Serge will come back. But these people, 
Some of them are sitting in their home and uh, they're not politically active. Others who are politically active, but they don't want to put their name, they don't want to throw their name out because they're going to get attacked because that's another problem we have in Armenia. Anybody who comes forward right away, Pashinyan's uh, machine will start bad mouthing these people and start calling them names. And uh, they will say, oh, he's a corrupt person, he's a supporter of the former leaders, uh, he's a bribe taker, he's an agent of a uh, foreign, foreign country. They'll find something. So when they call me and say, Mr. Sassoonian, we, we understand you're against Pashinyan, but who do you want to come and replace him? I tell them, I know people who can replace him, but I'm not going to give anybody's name because the minute I give anybody's name, they're going to start bad that person. They're going to accuse him of all sorts of crimes that he hasn't committed. So I don't want to torture the poor guy uh, to run away from uh, public service because the minute I give his name, uh, he's going to come under attack. Um, okay, so I don't know, a couple of weeks, months ago or something, I saw your picture. You were with, you were at this, I don't know, they have three names, they call them Bever, Sasnat Sarver, NDA. Um, what was your opinion with them? Uh, are those people are capable of doing or it's all a Papian, it's more uh, smarter than Pashinian? Or what was your opinion? What did you find out? Well, I, I will tell you my opinion about them, but in general, before I come to a specific group, in general, Pashinyan is so bad, he's damaged Armenia's interest and Artsakh interest so much that at this point, anybody who is willing to replace him, <laughs> I'm going to support them. I don't care who they are. Uh, I don't know if you can find anybody worse than Pashinyan in Armenia. So that's general comment about everybody. Secondly, about NDA or others, as a journalist, I'm sure you're the same way, I, uh, I'm in contact, I'm in touch with all sorts of people from all sides, because you can't just listen to just one side or one type of people. If you have an open mind, you're going to talk to all types of people, people that you agree, disagree, you like, don't like, but everybody knows something that you don't know. You learn something from everybody. So, so I, all my life, I've always stayed in touch with everybody on all sides not just one side or my side or the side I like. People I don't like, when they call me, I'm very happy to talk to them. Uh, so it's not nothing personal. So coming to NDA, in NDA, I, I know ma many of their leaders personally. Um, I'm gonna be very honest. They're, they're very uh, good people. They're patriotic, they're honest people. And many of them are intelligent people, Babian, Sefilian, and others. Uh, so I have no reason to, to be opposed to them. Uh, I'm glad that there are patriotic Armenians. Uh, we need patriotic Armenians, whether we agree or disagree. Now, the, the only criticism I have of them is that they think, because they, they, you know, they and a lot of other people now, after the 2020 war, they, they all uh, resent Russia because they expected Russia to come and save Artsakh and save Armenia. And Russia didn't do that. Of course, Russia is busy a little bit with Ukraine, but uh, and Armenians throughout their entire history, not just now, they always believe that, so that's nothing to do with now or 30 years ago, thousands of years ago, they started believing, I don't know how this idea entered their head, they start believing that somebody from outside is gonna come and save us. They don't know who it was, when, but they believe, they kept believing that. I think that's a bunch of nonsense, but that's what Armenians put in their heads thousands of years ago. And then the, we move forward from thousands of years ago, as time passes, and we all know Armenian history, we were subject to attacks, occupation, destruction, uh, taken hostage, prisoner, uh, there were periodic massacres, then there was a genocide. In all the centuries and under all these attacks, no one paid attention to a simple 
fact that no one ever came to rescue us. So if nobody has come to rescue us for thousands of years, why are why did we expect that Russia is going to come and rescue us? Some people say, oh, because Russia signed a, a document, the OSTE, uh, the Armenian hub uh, signed, so they're, they're obligated to help. Well, yes, <laughs> the uh, in, a, in a normal world, that's true, but that's not how things work. Yeah, but, yeah, but Harud, Can... Harud, you know, those people that just, lots of anti-Russian in Armenia now, basically they were saying Russia, Russia was has a treaty with Armenia, not Artsakh. And so, you know, Armenia saying not coming, supporting, because Armenia were bad-mouthing Russia. You know, if you are 50% smaller, the Russia is 50% more size of Armenia, not 50%, like, like they're 150 million, and they want Russia to come and beg them and do it. The number one. Number two, Kocharian, Sarkisian, all those people, they liberated Artsakh, they kept Artsakh for 30 years. They never one day went to Russia, said, come and help us. Never. They defended Armenia. This idiot, he is so incompetent, keeps saying, oh, well, Russia didn't can help. Russia is, Armenia was supposed to defend Artsakh, not Russia. I mean, you know that. Yeah. So these Armenians are going around and blaming Russia, this, Russia, that. Russia has its own interest, of course. You, uh, Armenians, they want Russia to be bad with the Turkey, bad with Azerbaijan. He's not going to do that. Well, that's why I always say every country in the world, except <laughs> one country, which is Armenia, unfortunately, every country in the world, the leaders of those countries, everything they do is based on protecting their national interests. Right. Except Armenia. Armenia mm -hmm. doesn't seem to know its national interests. They do things against their national interests. And they don't even understand that. They expect others to forget about their national interest and come and support us. Russia's interest lies with Azerbaijan and Turkey, especially with the Ukraine war. T Turkey is breaking all the Western sanctions, providing money and uh, uh, products uh, uh, that are sanctioned to Russia. Uh, and, it, and, and on top of it, Turkey, uh, Turkey is a member of NATO. So Russia has a member of NATO that's siding with Russia. And because Turks are very good uh, diplomats, politicians, they're playing on both sides. Very they're good. on one side member of NATO. On the other hand, they're, they're pro-Russia. They're uh, pro-Ukraine and pro-Russia, pro-United pro States, pro-Europe. They, they're smart enough to play that game. We are not. We, 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 we don't know how to play that game. So what we do is, because we always re expect somebody to come from outside and rescue us, when the Russians didn't come to rescue us, we said, ah, those terrible Russians. So now we expect, instead of saying, oh, oh we now realize that nobody's going to rescue us. They don't say that. We haven't realized that even now. Now we say, okay, forget about the Russians. The French will rescue us. The Americans will rescue us. NATO will rescue us. European Union will rescue us. Yeah. So now, so the game, the silly game of uh, relying on others uh, continues. And then after a few years, when Az Azeris keep attacking us, and when we see that nobody's coming to our rescue from the West, the, already we've started saying, oh, the Iranians will rescue us. Iranians are going to do what's in Iran's interest, not those, in Armenia's interest. Those are, the way they're acting is like, you know, you had kids at school. When they come home, they have bad grades, and they keep blaming the teacher, you know? Because they don't do their homework, they blame teacher. So this idiot, he doesn't know how to govern, and so he's jumping from European to Americans to here and there. One day he says, "Oh no, we have no problem with Russia." Next day, next day they say, "Oh, Russia didn't come and help us." So it's it's just he's an incompetent, uh, good luck with many, you know. Yeah. Well, the if if we had a experienced, knowledgeable leader, what that leader would have done is try to find common interest with a lot of countries, east, west, north, south, no matter who they are, because there's something you can benefit from each one, and each one of them are different from each other. They, they may have opposite sides, 
like Russia and U.S. is, and Turkey knows how to navigate yeah. those shark-infested waters and uh, benefit from both, benefits from NATO, benefits for, from, from Russia. And, and Armenia's leader is not capable of knowing how to Zero. manage the re relationship with all these countries. So now we've gone from being pro-Russian to anti-Russian to pro-U.S., and I don't know where we're going to go next, uh, uh, pro-Iran, pro-India, pro-China. But the way our mentality is, we'll never wake up and realize that no one's going to save us. We need to save ourselves. It's a simple thing. Uh, well, like, nobody you know, you know, like, you, like for a minute here, Europe, they're all colonizers. Every one of them, those European countries, they were colonizers. And both World War I and both World War II happened in Europe. That's where the American and Russian win, save European from themselves. So they created this NATO now. It's going around, it's creating all this problem. You know? And so Armenia wants to jump into that colony's people, you know. So it's just they have no diplomatic, no political strategy or geopolitics. They don't understand any of that stuff. Well, let, let me give you a concrete example. Right now, the, the the friendliest country in the world to Armenia is Macron from France, president of France. But look, even even the friendliest country in the world, so we just say friendly and go on. We don't look at the details. You have to follow the news and find out what's going on. You can't just make statements like that. So two years ago, after the war, both the French Senate and French Parliament passed resolutions. The resolutions were so pro-Armenian, were so anti-Azerbaijani. Uh, I think it passed unanimously. they unanimous. recognized Artsakh as a republic of Artsakh. They, they recognized Artsakh as a republic, but that was only one of the items. They uh, called for the release of all hostages immediately. They called for uh, sanctions against Azerbaijan and its ruling elite, against Aliyev's personally, his bank accounts, his properties, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It passed unanimously in parliament, if I'm not mistaken, and I think there was one guy voted yeah, against it in the Senate. So, so overwhelmingly, almost 100% passed how, uh, parliament and Senate. And the so very, then, just, let me just stop you there a minute. And then what happened, Macron, goes into Prague, help Pashinyan to recognize Karabakh, Arta, part of Azerbaijan. That same Macron who his uh, parliament 100% almost recognized. This is how, how hypocrites even Europeans are. Well, b before we go to Prague, the very next day after the parliament and senate passed this tremendous resolutions, pro armenian resolutions, the French foreign minister said that that's what the Parliament and Senate passed is the is their opinion. That's not the policy of the French government. I mean, he said it very explicitly. There's no secrets. There's no nothing to figure out or analyze. Yeah. He said, and then uh, Macron also said, I don't think we can solve any problem by putting sanctions on Azerbaijan. We need to sit down and negotiate. Which is the same thing Russians are saying to, to Pashinyan, saying, let's negotiate. Uh, you cannot expect Russia to send an army to have a war against Azerbaijan and Turkey at a time when Azerbaijan and Turkey are Russia's one of the few allies they have in the world. So Russia, uh, Turkey and Azerbaijan are valuable to put in. They're, not yeah, no one. they're trying to... Is, uh... Sorry, sorry. They're, they're trying to find a way of, of finding a solution. Now, the other point I want to make about the West, a lot of us who live in the West and we're in love with the West and we're citizens of Western countries, we think just because we live here, the countries we live in have the same position about Armenia as we do. Well, that is not always true. Countries are not individuals. They, countries and governments follow their national interests. They they don't care who's who's a friend, who's not a friend, who they like, who they don't like. So uh, United States right now is doing everything possible to make sure 
that Erdogan is is happy, is pleased. Biden just signed a big uh, F-16 contract, uh, billions of dollars. The uh, uh, and they they just announced this week that after a long time of Erdogan uh, being uh, kept on the blacklist of the White House, now in May he's coming to the White House to meet with Erdogan, which is a very uh, great uh, news for Erdogan. Uh, right before this weekend's uh, uh, local elections in in Turkey for mayor, etc. So, so Biden, who himself before becoming president was anti-Turk Turkish for decades, the minute he came walked in the White House as president, he started doing everything to win over uh, Erdogan and Turkey. Why? Simple, because Turkey is a member of NATO. It has the second largest army uh, in NATO. It is in a, located in a very strategic area, and that has the uh, entrance to uh, uh, the Black Sea, the Dardanelles. And uh, and Turkey is flirting with uh, Putin and Russia. So the last thing Biden wants to do is push Turkey further away from the West. Just the opposite. They want to win them over. So it, it's rather than the United States supporting Armenia and uh, against Turkey and Azerbaijan, the United States' interest is to support Turkey and also Azerbaijan because of its oil and gas uh, resources, which uh, Europe is dying over these days because they cut off the, the gas from uh, Russia. So we really don't have too many supporters. We'll take anybody. I mean, I'm not saying don't work with the U.S. or your, uh, work with everybody. Try to benefit whatever you can from the smallest uh, to the largest piece. Try to work with them. So so th those guys, those uh, Bever, whatever you call them, they go and hire Turkish lobby is law is though in America there was no other lobby they could uh, hire so you know there is this outlet in uh, Armenia called 301 I probably you know you heard them and so yeah. they were made some article about this Bever you know why they wanted answer why you pick up uh, a Turkish lobbyist to do it why you can so they send me and I publish and those Bavarians, they went crazy, you know, because so this Papian, which he was, I don't know how many times in the show, he come, he talk, he goes in there, he unfriend me, you know. So this is how they are. They're, they're very weak, all of those people in Armenia. They're very weak. Instead, he could have came here and, and explained and said, you know, this is the reason we did, you know. And uh, number two is, why are you lobbying? What is your lobbying in Armenia, in America? I don't really even understand. Lobbying what? You know, Americans are already in, in Pashinyan pushing. They were the one who pushed Pashinyan, Pashinyan to rec uh, recognize Artsakh part of uh, Azerbaijan. So what is your lobbying, you know? But they don't want to... The minute you uh, stand up and ask them question, somehow... You know, that this is the problem of Armenians. They either you with me or you're against me. There is nothing in between. You cannot negotiate. Well, that's why I don't want to be either for or against. I want to be fair to everybody. As I start saying, Pever guys, they're good Armenians, they're patriotic. But I think their, their political orientation is misplaced. Yes. Uh, the U.S. is not going to save Armenia. Uh, I know why they do that, because they're so angry at Russia, and uh, so they turn to the U.S. The uh, shifting orientation is not going to help Armenia. Armenia has to work with everybody. But with some countries, we'll benefit 1%. With other countries, we'll benefit 5%, 10%, 20 Whatever you can benefit, you have to take it. You have to pursue it. You can't just say no. I mean, look, Pashinyan now is trying to sign a peace agreement with our enemy who's trying to wipe us off the map, Azerbaijan, and trying to open the border with Turkey, which has committed genocide, and say genocide is a lie, and doesn't recognize it 100 years later. So if, if you can, if, 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 you, if you're thinking about working with your enemies, you definitely can, can work with Russia that we don't like right now, or with uh, France, US, China, India, Israel, Arab countries, you work 
but of course they're not all in the same place uh, same Every, degree everybody you, has, everybody has their own national interest there is nobody gonna just uh, turn over because of your Armenian three million Armenian you know for people that doesn't mean nothing you know maybe they do it uh, because of their care or humanitarian things but you know like you don't have power you don't have things you have to be nice to everybody you know but they don't understand that from first well, day Pashinyan came he was attacking uh, Russia Russia is this Russia Russia gave them the most advanced uh, ballistic missiles but they didn't use it I mean they could they could have devastated uh, Azerbaijan you know there is lots of generals now coming up uh, out are saying he, he won't let us use uh, 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 this ballistic missiles as Iskander, you know. So, so, no, they, so they, they keep blaming others, you know, like, uh, I don't know. Well, you reminded me, uh, uh, I know a year ago we were talking about the UN recognizing the genocide in 1985, and you said one of these days we'll, we'll talk all about it, how did that happen? But we will leave that to another day. Yeah. But just one thing that remind me, which is similar to what we're talking about today, at the UN when I was lobbying all the different uh, countries, trying to get them to recognize genocide, every time I approach an ambassador, I I never told all of them the same story, because each ambassador, their country has a different interest. So you have to talk to that ambassador based on the interests of their country. So you have to tailor your uh, message to to their interests. Uh, you can't just say, oh, the, uh, they killed us, Turks are guilty, vote yes. They can care less about that. They, they have to think, what's their benefit and what's their uh, loss if they support something? So you, when you talk to the French ambassador, you, you say one thing, uh, Russia, something else. Uh, Syria was a member there, uh, one thing. So you, you have to tailor your uh, message to the interests of the people you're, you're working with. That's what Pashinyan should do. Tailor his message. He's, he is revengeful, full of hatred. He's not there to negotiate. I mean, I when his wife invited me to a government office, the first thing I sat down, I said, why is your husband have got elected? Your boat, the wind is behind you. Why are you turning your boat against Kocharian, Tashna, Garaba? Why are you doing this? You know, this is what I told his wife. In fact, I even said to wife, it's, it's there. Let them come and say, I didn't say. I said to wife, why don't you become a prime minister? Because your husband is an idiot. I didn't say idiot, but I sort of nicely, uh, politically, I said, you know. So you know, like the, the guy is is angry man. He is he is uh, 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 I don't know if, uh, a psychological problem have this man. I mean, you could see him sat, sometime sitting on his chair. He laughed suddenly. Uh, you know, one day he was talking about asphalt, 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 asphalt. You know, like he was going crazy. You know, so he he has a mental problem. This guy. Dict or technically, all dictators have mental problem, you know. So you 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 keep saying Pashina should do this. He will never do. This. You met them. You spent make one hour. Have you convinced them anything? No, I I spoke one hour in his office with him. <clears throat> it was a complete waste of time. He didn't listen to a single thing. No. I said to him, and and I didn't expect him to agree with me. He could just. Uh, say, okay, uh, thank you for the information, let me look into it, yeah. and I'll decide what to do. He didn't even say that. So I, mean, I didn't those, go there thinking that he should do what I say. I'm, I'm not his boss. To be honest with you, there's few people in Armenia that I have great respect. But those other ones, the more I talk to them, the more I interview them, the more I lose interest. You know, like, for example, this Papian, he was here many times. I said to him, I said, look, the enemy today, Armenia, is Pashinya. I said, why don't you, you are, you are, you were appointed, I don't know whether Kocharian or Sarkisian, they made them an ambassador, okay? I said, why don't you go talk to Kocharian, talk to Sarkisian, unite, because you have one enemy. Oh, I said, Kocharian is worse than Pashinya. This is their attitude. How, how are you going to find a diplomat to go talk to everybody? 
You remind me. So when I tell the different Armenian groups in Armenia, you have to join. Otherwise, you're, you're with your half percent of one percent, you're never going to get anywhere. And if there's an election uh, in the future, Hashim is going to win again. Yes. Because his his followers, even though they're gone down a lot, but even the the small amount he has is much more than many times bigger than your half a percent, one percent. Oh. They say, no. We're not going to join because we don't like this side, that side, that side. So I tell them, I said, listen, uh, you can't talk like that. We're losing our homeland, and you're talking about this side, that side, who you like, who you don't like. When we lose the country, uh, your organization will not even exist. You won't even be in Armenia. Most of them will, will be dead. So it doesn't matter what side anybody is. They're all going to be equally defeated and, and destroyed. So... They say, no, 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 we can't. So I tell them, okay, in that case, since you're so uh, uh, stuck on uh, not not uniting, then I'm going to say one final sentence, and then I'm going to hang up the phone. And my final sentence is, it, since you refuse to join, then you're the responsible side why Pashinyan is sitting in his chair. Don't blame anybody else. You're the one who's keeping, them, keeping him there. I mean, Harut, it's so bizarre this country, there are so much intellectual, so much smart people, even though in diaspora too, nobody, nobody is saying, okay, I'm going to take this, go talk to everybody, try to, you know, there is nobody because everybody hates everybody. This is the problem. Like if tomorrow me and you, we go to a year one and we go talk to those people, I don't think they will ever accept us. Well, The, the country is, there is so much poison inside there. You know, like, you know, I, I run country back home, I mean, a business back home. I run in Canada. I run in U.S. I was always friend with my competitor. They, I got at least 30% of my business from my competitor because I was strong uh, technologically, you know. So you have to find the ways with your competitor you know, not compete with everybody, hate everybody, it does not work. And those Armenians don't understand. Everybody, you ask them, different answer that you get from them. Oh, song Talan Chien, oh, song Chien. It's just, I remember the days where I, twice a year, year, I went to Armenia, from villages to member of parliament. Every time I ask question, would you be able to uh, keep Artsakh? Always I heard this Armenian word, so what happened? Well, the one thing I want to add, Wally, in this regard, uh, Armenians as a nation, of course, we're very proud of being Armenian, and it's a wonderful uh, nation, long history, long civilization, and we're proud <laughs> of being Armenians. So I don't want to say negative things, but we have to tell the truth. The, here's the truth that uh, Armenians either don't realize or don't talk about. The, the reason we, we're in this shape is because Armenians throughout their entire history have have not had a politically political mind. They never really had a good assessment of the of the politics of the region or international politics. So they always made mistakes. And they all uh, were, they always were on the wrong side, and they we end up losing. So n even now, we really don't have people in leadership who have any political understanding. So that's that's why we're in this shape. Uh, because if you have a political mind, you you you're smart enough, experienced enough, that you find solutions to the problems you're in, and slowly slowly you dig yourself out of the hole you're in. And uh, you make contacts with the people around the world and uh, try to improve this, your situation. The, now, not only we're not improving the situation, every day that we wake up, we're going backwards. Yeah, we're, another we're village. The, every day there is another four village, another yeah, four village. We're losing territory. We're losing more uh, uh, prisoners of war, more wounded, more, more shot. Uh, it, it just we're going backwards. So, you know, when, when, when I say that we need to replace Pashinyan immediately, uh, I do not fool myself or people who listen to me to, to, to think that if Pashinyan is gone, in 24 hours, Armenia will turn into paradise. 
that will not happen because we're in such a big hole that it's going when 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 a halfway intelligent person comes as the leader he will do two positive things that we cannot do now one is he will gradually slowly working at it day after day month after month gradually try to step by step improve the situation that's one thing secondly he will do damage control which means that he will not allow the situation to get worse because he's smart enough to find solutions to the problems and so we're not going to go backwards anymore that we are now so we're losing pieces of army and territory already Azeri army after taking over Artsakh which Pashinyan said if we give Artsakh we're gonna live in peace uh, as Armenia well here we are we've given up Artsakh but uh, I don't think anybody thinks we're living in peace after we lost Artsakh then the Azeri army in 2021 and 2022 one year and two years after the war came and entered inside Armenia's border and they're still sitting there and Aliyev in January gave a speech saying, we're not going to leave the positions that we've uh, taken inside Armenia. So we've lost parts of Armenia, but that's not the end. Now, now Aliyev is asking for four villages, and Pashinyan is willing to give it. He says, otherwise there'll be war. And then there's eight uh, enclaves from the Soviet period left that were uh, Soviets had given it to Azerbaijan that they're inside Armenia. And Pashinyan agrees to that. And then there's uh, Davush, Zankezur, the corridor. Uh, but the, but non, non-ending. Uh, this will be non-ending. Non-ending because because Azerbaijan says, Aliyev says, there's no such thing as Republic of Armenia. Yeah. He calls it Western Azerbaijan. He says that's the historic homeland of Azerbaijan. Of course, it's a lie. There's no such thing. These people yeah, had but, a republic but, uh, 100 years ago. They didn't have a country before then. But you know but, you know how lie works. You know, if you re- keep repeating the lie, it becomes truth. Yeah. So he has formed a committee, gave them a big building in yeah. Baku as supporters. They're meeting. When a foreign dignitary comes, the government takes him to the Western Azerbaijan Committee, and they do their propaganda. They say Armenians are sitting on our land. They're conquerors. Uh, they're destroying our uh, mosques and our uh, religious sites. Uh, everything that they're doing in Artsakh, uh, they're blaming on us. Yeah, and we're just uh, just sitting there and uh, being the victim. Yes. Okay. Well, we <laughs> we killed uh, almost one hour, so it's amazing uh, how much time goes fast. Um, you know, I, I really thank you for you taking your time, but I let you say whatever you want and then we'll close. But and then I want to talk to you off the record. Well, the the, the thing that we didn't <clears throat> discuss very much, I would like to end with that, is uh, the last president of, our, of Artsakh, Shah Ramanian, gave an interview the, earlier this week and he said many things. Um, one of the things he said, he said, when they asked about, uh, do you have a government in exile? He, he said, yes. Uh, uh, the building I'm in, in the offices, uh, various uh, parliament members from Artsakh and others uh, come and we meet there. We have a government in exile. So when Pashinyan heard that, he went berserk uh, in, in a government cabinet meeting. Yeah, he, I think... I honestly think this is the one. Let me see. Hargel <laughs> Ուրհայաստանի 
համապատասխան միջոցներ, որպեսի նաև արտակին ուժերը որոշ շրջանակների Հայաստանի անվտանգության համար սպարնալիկ ստեղծելու համար չոգտագործ է, նել է իմ ասում կամա թերակամա դա ուրի շարց է, բայց հարց է, որ պետք է լայվ պատասխան ստանա, ես ես որ պատրաշ չեմ, ես ռակարություններ � Եթե որև մեկը Հայաստանի Հառապերությունում իրեն նույնական ասում է որպես կարավարություն, դա Հայաստանի ազգային ավտանգության խնդիր է և հույս ունեմ, որ այդ խնդրի գոյությունը չի նշանակի, որ մեր մարմիններ the last 20 years, long before he became, Pashin, uh, became prime minister, he was opposed to the Arsakh issue. And he thought that the sooner we get rid of Arsakh, the happier will be, more peaceful will be, which is not true, and we're seeing the result. So after becoming prime minister, now that he had power, he could do something with his uh, ideas. He tried to implement them and end up giving up Arsakh. And having given up Arsakh, now, he doesn't want anybody to use the word Arsakh. He never says Arsakh anyway. He hasn't said Arsakh since 2020. And uh, he doesn't want anybody to talk about Arsakh, to remember Arsakh, to do anything for Arsakh, to have a protest, demonstration, demands, uh, gatherings, uh, let alone a government in exile. So he, he's opposed to everything because every time somebody says Arsakh, it reminds him of his, uh, uh, the fact that he sold out uh, Arsakh. And he doesn't want to. He doesn't yeah. like that. He doesn't yeah. want to remember that he sold out Arsakh, so he he wants to shut them up. He, uh, he he's done so many things against them. It's poor people who lost everything, their land, their possessions, and they came with nothing to Armenia. Uh, Pashinyan started telling them on day one that you are not citizens of Armenia, and these people have Armenian passports in their pockets. They've had it for 20 years, and all of a sudden. They were citizens of Armenia in, in Arsakh all their lives. They arrive in Armenia, and they're not Armenian citizens. Yeah. And how could that be? I know why he's saying that. Because he knows, because he is a guilty conscience, he gave up Arsakh. So when there's elections in the future, these people are going to vote against him and his party. So if he says you're not a citizen, then they have no right to vote. So he will cancel their negative vote. That's the reason why. Yeah. Otherwise... Uh, I have a friend of mine who was working for the, for the government, and uh, he's a military guy, and the military hired him, and then they came to him a week ago and said, sorry, uh, you're not an Armenian citizen, you can't work here anymore. But the guy says, here's my passport, Armenian passport, that Armenia recognized, the whole world recognized, because they travel around the world with that passport. So it's, it's, it's an Ar Republic of Armenia passport, but they say you're not citizen. Mm -hmm. So... They're not citizens. They they don't have the they they don't have a homeland. They they're not Armenian citizens. So what are they? Are they citizens of Azerbaijan, which they is their deadly enemy? And yeah. and now he says you can't even have a government in exile, uh, because he's saying anybody who creates another government in Armenia, we already have a government. Nobody's creating another government to take over Armenia. This is a government in exile, which is a common uh, thing that everybody recognizes around the world, people who've lost their homeland, they have some of them have government in exile. That doesn't mean that they're ta taking over Armenia. They're not taking over anything. They just want to keep the dream alive. So uh, I will conclude by this. After destroying Artsakh, losing Artsakh, now the only thing that we have left is the dream of one day returning to Artsakh as, uh, uh, on our land. So Pashinyan, after losing the territory, now he's trying to force all of us to lose the dream of Artsakh, the idea of Artsakh from our minds. So not only you lose the country, but you also lose the idea. Now, we lost the co country because Azerbaijan, our enemy, conquered it. But having an idea in our heads 
Azerbaijan can't do anything about our, our idea in our head. That's up to us to keep that idea. Until Pashinyan comes, he says, no, get it out of your mind, the word Artsakh, or returning to Artsakh, or, or you're, uh, you're entitled to anything, uh, any help, uh, because uh, just forget about it. Uh, and, and he, in, his, in the segment that you just played, he gave uh, very clear orders to his national security people and to the court system that says these people are creating a threat to Armenia's national security. There should be consequences. In other words, he's going to arrest them. And, and can you imagine what's going to happen one day when you wake up and Shah Ramanian was the last president of Artsakh? He's arrested and put well, in jail. He, he has no problem doing that. I know. Well, I mean, the irony is that the other leaders of Artsakh are in jail in Baku, and now some of them are going to be in jail in Yerevan. Yeah, that's what's uh, going to happen. Two jail, one, for, one in Azerbaijan, one in Armenia. Yeah, and or, already the, uh, I, I talk to Arsakh Armenians every day uh, 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 to see wh what their problems are, and they tell me all their problems. Uh, lack of housing, lack of uh, money, lack of support, uh, 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 be being a, not a citizen. Uh, and then many of them have already started, I don't know how true it is, but uh, they told me it's thousands of Arsakh Armenians have already left Armenia because they can't work, they, they can't live. They, they, they've gone to Moscow and, and, and you know, in, in Moscow they get a job and they, they feed their families. So, uh, I mean, Azerbaijan got rid of Arsakh Armenians from, from Arsakh. They, they came to Armenia and, and then now these people were losing them again to, to Russia. Pashinyan, Aliyev, same mind, mindset. There's no different. One give order, the other one implement. So I thank you very much for taking your time and coming. I appreciate that. But don't go away. I want to talk to you. Let me close this program. For our viewer, thank you very much for watching. And please share. And uh, I know everybody is afraid to like because Pashinyan is watching on your shoulder. But it, it doesn't matter. So take care, and we'll see you next episode. Have a nice, good evening. Oh